Uh, obviously, tough game, tough loss. You know, give Wisconsin credit. Questions? Chris, the, the ejection, was that something that had been building? Given I've been loss? ejected. I've been ejected twice. Uh, once I asked for it, um, the game was over. Uh, coach hundreds of games. Never, never even come close to being ejected. Um, this was, uh, I, I believe, an official who I couldn't communicate with the entire game. Um, and, you know, uh, unfortunately, um, the first technical was warranted. I deserve the first technical. I don't believe the second one was, but officials are going to do what they want to do. And I've got to be more composed. In that situation, I wasn't composed. That's on me. So, what did they tell you as it as it happened? Couldn't tell me anything. Couldn't talk to him. Couldn't talk to him. Sorry to cut you off. Couldn't couldn't talk to him. Couldn't talk to him all night. All we want to do as coaches is talk to officials. Couldn't talk to one of them. When you say that, you mean like any play? Like if there was a foul, you couldn't. Couldn't have talk the whole half. Didn't want to hear it. What was your message in the locker room after the game? I know it's got to be a worse, weird spot uh, losing the game, but also, you know, you didn't see the second half. At least you were out there for the second half. What was the message after the game? I guess, you know, how do you keep this thing moving in the right direction? When, no, I think we just all have to be better. We, have to, we all have to be better. You know, it begins with me. Again, I lost my composure. That's on me. It's fully my responsibility. I deserve the first technical. Uh, we all have to be better. Our start has to be better. Um, we have to play harder, and we certainly have to play smarter. We've got to coach better, all those things. When you say play harder, do you think effort's been a big thing lately as part of this? Or is uh, I, I think we play harder when we're down, and I think our effort is not what it needs to be. It certainly wasn't what it needed to be to start, but again, that's that's ultimately my responsibility. So I want to make sure I don't attribute something to an official who didn't do it. You get first technical from Pfeiffer. I deserved it. Yeah, you get first Courtney. from Pfeiffer. The offensive foul of justice was called by Courtney. Uh, yes. Um, I don't know who called the offensive foul. Uh, it was Courtney. Okay. Okay. The nearest official to you was Pfeiffer. Did he give you your first? Did he give you the first technical? Or not? I believe it was Courtney. Okay. And then Higgins gave you the. Yeah, I don't want. I don't want. Yeah, listen. I'm just trying to be accurate who it is because people want to know who ejected. Yeah, I mean, people can go back and look at the film, Bruce. I've got to be better in that situation. I would like to be able to talk to officials. That's all I would ask. Um, again, I've coached hundreds of games and not gotten thrown out. Um, the first technical was warranted. I thought it was a flop. I think the video concluded that it was a flop. They're trying to get that out of the game. They didn't. Give them credit. He took the hit. I believe it was a flop. I said that. I shouldn't have reacted like I reacted. I deserved the first technical. But after that, I think it was. I asked Coach Guard if the option officials have to call a flop has made low post contact more clear for you to teach to your players and cleared up the ambiguity about low post contact. The spirit of his comments was no, it has not helped. Is that what you were frustrated about, the apparent disparity in how it's called in this game and maybe all season? I think that the flop was called much better earlier in the season. And I think that uh, I've clearly done a poor job getting our guys um, to understanding uh, that, that there's a technique to that. And um, again, I'm not taking anything away from Wisconsin. They beat us. I've said I lost my composure. That was on me. So I don't, I don't want to take anything away from their win. What did you feel like was the, the catalyst for the late comeback? And, and what was going through your mind when you were watching that? Like the end of that? I mean, I think we've we played uh, better at times when we've been down all year. And that was certainly the case. Chris, you've asked for better leadership from your veterans. Have you seen positive movement? <coughs> and, and for a night like this, what did you see from your leaders? We need more. We all need to do better. We need more. 
the first half, uh, you know, this is a team that shot like 33 percent their last game, and uh, they came in and, and it was kind of reminiscent a little bit of Indiana, uh, where they had good ball movement, got open shots, and hit them. And, uh, but that was at one end. At the other end, you guys had 11 turnovers, maybe didn't handle their physicality. Just what what was missing in the first half? I mean, beyond the six points they got in the last minute, just it, it was very one-sided. It's, it felt yeah, we had no bite. We had no bite early. We had no bite early, and um, you know, for really for the first <clears throat> most of the first half. And for you to say that. In game 22, it, it just kind of, at this point, it, it seems like a repeat of what you've said after many of these same similar games. I don't know, just uh, what can be done to shake this team out of the, out of the, is that called it a slump, out of the doldrums right now to get it put back around? I mean, Steve, that's, that's our job as coaches to figure out. That's what we're trying to do. That's what we're working hours on end to try to do. Um, spending hours and hours trying to figure out um, uh, what we need to do better to get our players a better position and certainly to, to perform at a higher level. So um, if I had answers for you right now, um, then we might not have performed like we did. A couple weeks ago after Minnesota, you said that the hardest part of coaching is trying to figure out what's in the minds of 18 to 22 year old kids. Do you have internal issues on this team that you're battling as a staff? Are they as connected as they were at the beginning of the year emotionally? No resentment over Bryce's success, anything like that? Yeah, I don't really see that, Bruce, uh, as being a significant issue. Um, and uh, if I did, I wouldn't tell you. But I don't, I don't see that as being an issue. Um, so uh, I think our guys are, they like each other. Um, I have challenged our leadership, and, and I've been open about that. Um, but again, that's on all of us. The last two, Patrick, and then Chris, sort of to follow up with what Steve is asking. Zed, Ice, any of the guys we've talked to after losses have said a lot of the same things without much changing. You said a lot of the same things post game. Is this in need of a, a, a bigger shakeup than what you guys have done? Is that even a possibility at this point in the season to do something? Different. I don't know if that's practice. I don't know if that's game. I mean, is if, if what you're saying isn't changing, is there something else that needs to be done? Well, I mean, I think we've had some some efforts that have been good in this stretch, uh, where we have not been rewarded with the win, um, and certainly stretches of play that have, have been good in this stretch, uh, where we have not um, not won the game and not received the outcome for for a variety of reasons. Um, so I, I don't look at this stretch as saying we played poorly in every game. Um, I think there have been games where we played well uh, for the most part and lost. I thought we played very well at Rutgers and lost. Uh, I think there's also been games where we played uh, just too poorly in too many stretches. And um, tonight our turnovers throughout the game were a significant issue. Um, our lack of uh, just bite early was a significant issue. Um, and then, as I mentioned, I take responsibility for, I just don't think we played as poised as we needed to. So um, I don't look at this stretch as saying, you know, it's been the same story every game. Um, it hasn't. Um, and as far as uh, significant changes, again, those are things that we'll address as a staff and I'll spend a lot of hours trying to figure out um, if we need to make significant changes. Chris, when, when you have, uh, your veterans aren't maybe giving you as much in-game production as I'm sure you probably hoped for at the beginning of the season. When those guys, you're asking them for more leadership and they're struggling in games, how difficult is it to lead when your shot isn't falling, when you're turning the ball over, or just not performing maybe at the level that would help create a winning performance? I feel like a guy like EJ Liddell on this team when you know he's going to lead you in practice, you know he's going to do all those things he did off the court, and he's going to go out and get you 15 to 20 tonight. Like, you don't seem to have that right now. How hard is it to lead when you're not producing in a game? You know, I, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, the good ones find a way. But obviously, you're, um, it helps if your best players are your best leaders. 
and that was certainly the case with, with him. And his voice was consistent and his approach was consistent uh, every day. Uh, but he also had help with that. You know, he had some older guys with Kyle and uh, Justin and other guys who were helping. So it's not on any one or two specific guys. I think um, there needs to be a better collective effort. We've got to figure out how to uh, reach them at a higher level. Um, again, this is um, this is my and our responsibility. And, um, you know, um, you know, we're going to work extremely hard to do better than what we're doing. Thanks.